All right, good morning, everybody, to this wonderful day. Um, Friday, Erev Shabbos, the third day of Adar. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. Let's get our trusted... My... Hmm. I can't see you all, wonderful people. Can you guys see me? Confirming everybody can see me? Yeah, I can see you. you I don't put my picture up. <laughs> no, 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 no. For some reason, I can't see, I can't see my own screen either. Oh, Okay. Um, so I've, if I can't see my screen, then I will not know if you guys can see the pictures or not. Oh, I see. Well, we'll have to do it without pictures. One second, let me pause. Let me stop the share for one second. Okay, now let's share screen again. Okay, there we go. Now I'm able to see. Okay. Oh. Let's get the book set up. <laughs> you have to unblur. Yeah. Unblur, and then let me also bring this closer. So we can all see. Oh, there we go. Now we're able to see. So let me move this. Marvelous. Ah, okay. okay. Simply marvelous. Now we're able to see what's going on. Okay, let's start. Vasisa esames beach at se chitim, Chamesh ames erech, Chamesh ames rechev. You shall make the altar of atse shitim, acacia wood five cubits long by five cubits wide. Um, Ravua yia mezbeach. The mezbeach should, the altar should be square. Veshalash amis kamaisa, and it should, uh, <coughs> and its height should be um, three amis. This is a, uh, this, Oh, we're already past this. Here we are. Okay, now we can see the picture of the Mizbeach. And you can see how it's a perfect square. And it's three amis high. Okay. Okay. Pasuk number two, Vasisa Karnaisov, Al Arba Pinaisov. You shall make its horns. That's what it's calling those corner things. Um, yeah. The kar Karnais. You should make them um, uh, its horns. Al Arba Mimenu Tiena Karnaisov, Itsipaisa Isa Nechishas. And you shall overlay it with copper. Let's look at Rashi. This means that he should not make them the horns separately and then attach them to the altar. But it should actually be one piece, as you can see in the picture, uh, in this circle right over here, how it's one piece, the corner and the rest of the zeh. And you shall overlay it with copper to atone for brazenness. As it is said, and your forehead is brazen. Nechusha is a similar word to nechayshas. Pasuk number three, Vasisa Siraisov. We're going to talk now about these pictures. You can see the different clay, Kalim, the different Kalim. So we have Sirais, which are pots, and Ya'im, 
which or Yaav, as it says in the Pasuk. But let's read it inside. Vasisa si Raisav, Ladashnai, the Yaav, Umiz Rakaisav, Umiz Glaisav, Umachtaisav, the Chol Kelov Tas and Achaisis. And you shall make its pots to remove its ashes and its shovels and its sprinkle basins and its flesh hooks and its scoops. And you shall make all its implements of copper. So this is the Si Raisav. This is the sea rice, the yaim, our type of shovels. It looks to me, it looks more like a pan. Um, and Mizrakais, the basins, they had it in this, in this way that you can't put them down because you have to hold them the whole time. So it, oh, I see my hand is blocking. They made in a way that you, you it doesn't stand on its own like a snow cone. The prongs, that's this thing right over here, and the fire pans, the machtois, are over here. These, <coughs> this is used in doing the k'tayras. Okay. Um, a lot of what we said was this Rashi. We just said, let's actually go through a little bit what each thing. So the the we already said the the the. The pots were used to remove the ashes. The, the shovels, shovels in which the client takes the ashes. Sorry, the shovels were for the ashes. The sprinkling basins, which were this guy. Sprinkling the snow cone looking thing. That was to receive the blood. It had the blood on it. Flesh hooks, sort of bent hooks with which he would strike the flesh they would hook would be embedded into it. And with them, he would turn it over on the coals of the altar. So they use those hooks to turn over um, the meat and, and do stuff like that. And then the machtoisov, the machtois, the fire pans, they had a cavity in which to make take coals from the altar and to carry them onto the inner altar for incense. Because of their function of scooping, they are called scoops. Apropos. Okay, let's go to Pasuk number four. Vasisa loy michbar masay reshes nechoshes. So make it for make for it a copper grating. Vasisa al reshes arba tabois nechoshes al arba ktsoisos. You shall make on the netting four copper rings on its four ends. So on the altar, oh, you can't see that high. On the top of the altar, as you can see right here at the top of the page, in very small, or in the bottom of the page, zoomed up picture, it had on the side like a type of, it's called a michbar uh, design. And on each end, on each corner, it had four rings, all made of copper. Mistake. We're going to see what those rings are for. Okay. You shall place it beneath the ledge of the altar, melamata from below. And the net shall extend downwards until the middle of the altar. So it, this picture you can see. The netting is a clearer picture, or in this one, you can also see the netting went to exactly in the middle, exactly in the middle it went to, and that's where the um, rings were. Okay. Let's get to the badim. The badim are these, uh, these holes. And you shall make poles for the altar. Poles of acacia wood. And you should overlay them with copper. So the whole thing was made of acacia wood and copper. And you shall, and its poles shall be inserted into the rings, as you can see in the picture. I'll state salais on both sides. I'll state salais on both sides on both sides of the This I say, when it is carried. Okay, the next one. Nevuv. 
luchos, tasa oisa, you shall make it hollow out of boards, kasher hera oischa bahem kenyasu, as he showed you on the mountain, so shall you do. Let's look at the Targum Onkelos. Um, Nevuv Luchais, as the Targum Onkelos and, and Yonason, Targum Yonason, explain, there should be boards of acacia wood from all sides with a space in the middle, but all of it shall not be made of one piece of wood that would measure five cubits by five, five cubits, like a sort of anvil, like one solid block. So, Going to be very interesting because there's the the hollow panels. They are not covered in copper, so that's why you can see you will be able to see the color of the you can able to see the acacia wood, and it, it has these indents to go like on top, you know, to go into these holes, like to basically cover onto the uh, copper. Very interesting. Okay. That ends today's chitas. Uh, Tomorrow, uh, I believe it talks about the, I believe tomorrow is going to talk about the way that the ramp and the other stuff that are in the Mishkan. Okay. Let's go to the Tanya. We ended yesterday chapter number 29 today we're going to chapter number 30. let's read this note before we get started in chapter 29 the altar will discuss very means of overcoming timtum alev the state of insensitivity in which one's heart is dull and unresponsive to his contemplation of god's greatness all these methods are aimed at crushing one's spirit whereby one crushes the cause of the timtum alev the arrogance of the sitra akra of the animal soul Chapter 30, the Altarabba continues this discussion by outlining another method of dealing with this problem. Okay, so we're going to talk about Timtum Alev and how to overcome this problem, a continuation of uh, last chapter. And here is another way to do it. One who suffers from Timtum Alev must also let set his heart to fulfill Lakayan. Ma my Mirabe Senu Zakran of Vracha to fulfill what our sages say, the heavy shval ruach bifne call Adam. Lowly of spirit before every man. This is a, a, a known saying, a known Maimarazal that We're going to actually, this note is very important in understanding what it means, shafal ruach. What does it mean, lowness? Does it mean low self esteem? Does it mean uh, that you degrade yourself? So let's, let's read this note. Now, a number of commentaries have noted a difficulty in this Mishnaic dictum. For the Hebrew language distinguishes between two types of humility. The first is a feeling of inferiority in comparison to others. The second is the absence of self-glorification. Even while recognizing one's superiority, the thought that his superior qualities are God-given gift and that another man similarly endowed might in fact have invested them to a better advantage. Like we talk about Maishu Rabbeinu, that he was the most humble man to ever live. And we probably have talked about this, or Rabbi Bukit might have talked about this. What does that mean? He, he didn't know that he talked face to face to God. He didn't know that he took the Jewish people out. He didn't know his accomplishments. Of course he knew them. He knew that if God, that these accomplishments and these gifts were given by God. And if God had given these talents to somebody else, they would have done just as good, if not a better job. This is how Moshe felt. That's what it means. It's not that he doesn't know what he, what he accomplished or what his gifts, God-given gifts were. The former type of humility is called shvilus, literally lowliness. And the latter is called anivus, an anav. Since the Mishnah deploys the, the adjective 
Shafal Ruach is explicitly advocating the former type of humility. And here the difficulty arises. Why should one regard himself as being lowlier than every man? Lowlier even than the lowliest, lowliest sinner. This is why this, the word shfal is, is difficult to understand why it's in this pasuk or in this uh, maimar azal. Because of this difficulty, some commentaries interpret the Mishnah as saying, conduct yourself effacingly towards every man. Treat every man with deference as though he were superior to you. So they say the veheve, veheve means don't actually consider it. Don't actually think, think it to be true, but conduct yourself in a way that every person, you treat every person as greater than you. The Alter Rebbe, however, objects to the interpretation and he learns as follows. The heve, the word the heve, the MS la mite. It's not just that you act. Be this way and do not merrily act thus in all sincerity. Bifnei chol adam mamish. In the presence of every man, mamish. In the presence of every man, mamish. Afilu bifnei kal shabakalim. Even before the kal shabakalim, somebody who's completely not uh, uh, learned or, or observant in any way. So having rejected this interpretation, however, we remain with the original difficulty. How is one expected to regard himself as being lowlier than the lowliest sinner? As we know, another famous chazal, Maimar Razal, that don't judge your fellow until you have stood in his place. For his place, his physical environment, that's what causes him to, to sin. His, his livelihood makes him go to the marketplace every day, all day. And he has to sit at the street corners. The ain of Royas call ta hatayvis, and his eyes see, sees all sorts of temptations. So you don't know what every person is going through. We don't know when we see somebody sinning what his upbring, upbringing was, what environment he came from, what home he might have had, what what type of struggles he might have in his life. The ha'ayin roya. What the eye sees, the heart desires. So, could be he has to, he's there. The Yitzray Boyer, Ketanur Boyer, Additionally, it may be spiritual, it may be his spiritual place, the nature of his evil impulse that leads him to sin. His evil nature burns like a baker's fiery oven. Could be he has a different Yitzhahara than you do. Like it says in Isaiah, it burns like a flaming fire. Somebody maybe who goes to the marketplace, you know, in free, not a lot. And most of the day he's standing in his home. He's sitting, you know, he's at his home. Or maybe he is going all day to the marketplace, but his nature, his spiritual place, his nature is not as passionate. His natural nature is not as passionate. Because the evil impulse, the Yetzir Hara, is not um, equal in every, in every person. One person's na nature may be more passionate and others less so. The truth is, even someone who has an extremely passionate nature and and his job 
obligate him to be on the street corners all day. Remember, this is metaphorically, right? The, the street corners doesn't have to be the street corners. It means out in the world. He has no, the, the altar ever gives a, a, a caveat here. He doesn't, he has no excuse whatsoever for his sins. And he is still termed a Rasha Gamur, a, an utter evildoer. Alashar ain pacha delikim lenegadena for not having pacha delikim fear of God before his eyes. Ki haya loyles apik vilimshol al ruach tavase shabalibai for he should have controlled himself and restrained the feeling of desire in his heart. Remember, there's two different things. There's how you look at somebody else's situation, and how every person looks at their own situation. So the way you're looking. At somebody else's situation, you have to be dan lekafslus. You have to judge favorably in a sense, saying their situation is their situation. If I were in their shoes, who knows how? If I would be even worse than them, or or not judge at all. But from their own perspective, they have to understand that this is not an excuse for them. They have to be able to control themselves and restrain their desire. Because for fear of God, who sees all of their actions, as was explained above, that the mind has, has shaylet, is controls, has supremacy over the heart by nature of one's birth. So, in, so truly. It's a great uh, struggle. It's a great struggle to break one's evil nature, which burns like a fiery flame for the fear of God. Indeed, it is a it is a nisoyin mamish. It's a great test. Therefore, Therefore, every man, every person has to weigh and examine his own position according to the standards of his place and rank in his in divine service. Are you putting up the right fight? Are you putting up the proper fight? Are you serving Hashem properly? Even the most dispassionate and clustered of men must often engage in battle with his evil inclination, both in the area of doing good and in that of turning away from evil. As the Alter Rebbe goes on to illustrate, what is the realm of doing good? To to do davening with prayer, not just to say the words, but to actually have kavana and 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 engulf yourself in the prayers. Lishpay nafshay to pour out your soul. Lifnei Hashem to God. Bechol koych hamamish with all of your strength. Admitzoy hanefesh, admitzoy hanefesh to like ring out your soul. Ulehilcham im gut. So that's the first one. And to wage war. Yeah, to wage war with your body and your nefesh Bahamas shaboy that's in you. Um, uh, atzuma, crushing and grinding them like the dust. Crushing and grinding them like dust every single day in the, before the morning and evening davening. And also during prayer, to exert yourself with a yigia nefesh. The words that the Rebbe is using are so powerful. But with, with the uh, exertion of the spirit, the yigia's basar, an exertion of the body. So, when looking at someone else, we have to look about, we have to look at every person 
as they are greater than, than we are. And that if we were in their place, who knows where we would be. And we have to know to ourselves that wherever we are, whatever level we're at, we can pull ourselves up. We can, whether it's regarding mitzvahs, I say to you, like the Alter Rebbe's example of tefillah, where we can, we can always strive to do better and better. Oh, I never clicked this. Let's go see what the Tehillim is for today. The Tehillim is chapters 18 to 22. And I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful Shabbos. This Shabbos, I hope to see everybody in shul.